This is the eighth and final section of chapter eight on critical path analysis. And this is scheduling diagrams. Now, when we draw a scheduling diagram, what we're doing is we are assigning workers to activities. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to assume that one worker is required for each activity. We're always going to use the first available worker to assign to an activity. If we get to a position where we um, can choose more than one activity to assign a worker to, then we're going to choose the activity with the lowest late time. Now, we can't say for definite what's the minimum number of workers needed to complete a project, but we can work out a lower bound. So we can work out the minimum number of workers um, that the value should be. And uh, if we get that lower bound, we've know, we know we've found the minimum number of workers, but we can work out a lower bound. A lower bound is uh, for the number of workers needed to complete a project by its critical late time is the sum of all the activity times divided by the critical time of the project. Now, when we do this calculation, we may not necessarily get a whole number, but what we want is the smallest integer that's greater than or equal to this value here. So the smallest integer greater than or equal to the value you get from doing this calculation. Example 15, the diagram shows a Gantt chart for a project. Schedule the activities to be completed in the critical time by the minimum number of workers. Okay, so uh, to find out a lower bound for the minimum number of workers, I need to do this calculation. I need to work out the total time of the activities divided by the critical time. Now I can see the critical time straight away. That's going to be 25. So now what I need to work out is the sum of all of the activities. So let me write down their activity time. So A, I can see is 8. B is 6. C is 8, because it goes from 8 to 16. D is 7. E is 11. F is 10, because that goes from 8 to 18. G goes from 16 to 21, so that's five. H is three, it's probably easier to count the boxes. I is four and J is four. So I want to work out the sum. So I've got eight plus eight plus five plus four plus six plus seven plus 11 plus 10 plus three plus four. We want to extend my division line. Divide that all by 25. So adding those up, we get 66. We divide that by 25. So let's do that. And we get 2.64. So remember, lower bound is the integer that's greater than or equal to this. So that means that my lower bound for the minimum number of workers is three. So I need at least uh, three workers or more. OK, so here's my scale that I'm going to be using. Number of days along the top It's going up to 25 days. So let's just put a dotted line there to show where I need to finish. And then I'm just going to do a line of activities to represent each worker. So let's start with worker number one. So what we're going to do for worker number one, we're going to assign all the acti uh, critical activities so he doesn't get a break or she doesn't get a break. So from naught to eight, is going to be activity A, then followed by activity C, which is another eight days. Then followed by activity G up to day 21. 
and then activity J is going to take them to the end of the project. So we'll just write those activity names in A, C, G, and J. So we've used up one worker. Now the rest is a bit like Tetris, slotting them together. So B, I could start activity D. So I'm just going to draw some outlines here. I could start activity D straight after B and put it here. Then I'm looking for an activity that I can start straight away or with little delay. And actually activity F, if I move it to start at 13, it will still finish on time. So I can have activity F start at day 13, finish at day 35. So that slots nicely in there. Then that leaves this little gap at the end. So we can't really add anything into that. So we'll assign this to our second worker. So our second worker is going to start with activity B, which will be six. Then they're going to go straight on to D up to 13. So they'll finish here. And then activity F will take them up to day 23. So it will go to here. So we've got like a little bit of empty space at the end. So we'll just write the activities on B, D, F. And we'll just shade this to show that this is empty time here. Right, let's go into worker three. So if we can complete it with three workers, we've now we know we've found an optimal solution. So we're now left with activities E, F, and I. So basically we want to see if we can slot those together. So E, F, sorry, no, F we've done. So it's just E, H, and I. So can we slot these together? Right, now you see I's got a nice big float. I can move it over to finish after H. H I can't start any earlier. I could delay E, but there's, there's no point. I could leave it as it is. So I could leave E there if I wanted to, and then have H start here. Then delay I, it will still finish at the same time I've got a float of three there so if I move it across by three I can get H sorry I to start here and that all slots into place nicely I could as I said move E forward just to get rid of that gap and delay that by one so this person is working uh, constantly they don't have a day out so what that's what we'll do we'll delay E so it starts at seven so that's going to start uh, here and it will finish at 18. So I'll go across to 18. So this is activity E. That's immediately going to be followed by activity H, which starts at 18 and is going to finish at 21. So that will be here. So it's activity H. Then we're delaying activity I. So um, by three, so that it starts at 21 and finishes at 25. Like this activity I. And we'll just fill this in here to show, well, this is empty time. So we know this is an optimal solution because the number of workers we found is the same as the lower bound. So the shading shows any periods of inactivity for the workers. And we could just finish off by saying the scheduling can be done with three workers, as we've shown, which is the minimum as three is the lower bound. Example 16, the diagram shows an activity network represent a project with a minimum time of 31 days, see there, using a scheduling diagram to find a new completion time for the project, given that only two workers are available. Okay, so I've drawn my scale along the top here, 
I know I'm going to be going beyond 31 days. I don't know how much longer. So that's why I've extended it there. And here I know that I'm only going to have two workers. So we'll have worker one and worker two. Okay, so we'll start with activity A here. That's going to take eight days. I'll put that in. And also activity B needs to start. Uh, and that is going to take six days. So activity B we'll put in here and we're just going to continue along. So we'll tick them off as we've done them. Now we can either go from activity C or D from A, but C has no float. So we really want to leave the activities without a float and assign those uh, to later on. So we, we're going to put C in because there's no float and that's got a length of nine. So that'll take us up to 17. Here, activity C. Now, we can't put activity D in here because that can't be complete or started until they, uh, uh, this point here, eight. So we will put in activity E because that can be completed uh, or started straight after activity B. So that has a length of five. So we'll put activity E in here. Right now we can slot in activity D because it's after day eight and it's got a length of seven, which means it would finish at 18, which is fine because we can finish up to day 21. So we'll put in uh, seven here for activity D so that gets slotted in and we tick it off. Now we I've got a choice of different activities, but remember we want to pick the ones without a float because we don't have a choice. So activity F is what we're going to put in now and that has a length of four. So that will go here. Okay, now for the next part, we've got choices for different activities that we could start with to continue. But the one that's going to get it finished in the quickest time is actually assigning activity G here and sometimes a bit of trial and error when doing these questions you might want to draw these in pencil and then you can rub them out and change them so by actually using activity G which has a duration of five we can put that in here now the advantage with ticking them off as we go along means that when you add an activity, you know that the activities before them have been completed, but just double check. So the next activity we're going to add is going to be activity H. Now E has finished, it depends on E, so we're, we're fine there. So that's got a duration of eight. So we'll put that in like this. So activity H is gonna go here. Then activity I, I depends on F, F has already been completed. We've ticked it off, but just make sure it doesn't overlap. Um, and that's going to take five for activity I. So we'll just put that in and tick it off. Next, we're gonna add activity J, which is five. So that can start here. We'll take that off and then lastly activity at K which is five as well so we'll put that in activity K here and we can take this off so this does take a bit of trial and error if for example instead of putting activity G here you went for activity H um, or activity K you'll end up going to about 36 days. So, you know, it may take more than one attempt to get the, the right answer. OK, so we can say that the minimum time needed, time needed with two workers is 
34 days. So we'll just do a final check for dependency before we move on. So we'll go here. So C and D can only be completed once A has been completed. That's fine. A is completed here, C and D. Um, then here E has to come after B, which is fine. F needs to happen after C. Yep, that's there. G needs to happen after D. Yep, that's all fine. Then here H and K need to happen after E. E is here. H and K is there. That's fine. Then um, I think we did this one. F needs to happen after C. I needs to happen after F. Yes, it does. Um, and then J needs to happen after G, H and I. So J needs to happen after G, H and I. Yes, it does. And um, H and K needs to happen after E. I think we've done that one already. Yep, so all the dependencies are, are satisfied. We can be sure that this is the correct solution. So you should now be able to complete exercise 8i on pages 252 to 253. And then the next exercise, which starts on page 253 and goes all the way to, to page 256.